Hello and welcome to The Shakedown. Our mission is to inform people about how the criminal justice system works, the real people impacted by the justice system, and methods to improve justice through compassionate and casual conversation. Hosts of The Shakedown share over 50 years of combined personal experience dealing with Texas prisons and working to change the criminal justice system. And now, here's our show. Okay, welcome to The Shakedown. It's been a while since we've recorded like this, and it's been a while since you've seen this guy over here. And so let's talk about what's going on, what's what's happening. Um, recently, I just got done recording or just got done releasing an episode about what people don't know about crime and what everyone gets wrong about crime. And uh, Malone just got done watching that. And um, we've been sitting here talking about um, one of the future episodes I'm working on that's probably come out by now, which is an episode about what can actually be done to prevent crime and what's been proven to prevent crime. And uh, Malone has a lot of thoughts, and I wanted to get his take and talk about uh, his opinion, and also based on his experience, because he has a lot more than me. So Malone, what do you think? What do you think is will prevent crime, and what do we, what do we need to do? I'm I'm not so sure that my my uh, opinions differ from yours or from what you've already put out there in, in your recent uh, that. What did you call that thing that you did? What was the official term for the way that you uh, did that? It was the. Uh, no, it was a video essay. It was the, the, the video, video essay? essay. Mm-hmm. The video essay that you did on uh, on the the idea on your uh, those subjects. I wasn't disagreeing you with you at all as to what you thought should be done. But what I am. Uh, disagreeing with you on is that is your approach to trying to on on how to implement that. I think that you have. I mean, I get this. I do the same thing a lot of times where you think that because you're you're right or that you have logic or 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 uh, evidence on your side that when you present said proof or evidence or whatever to someone else that they'll automatically go, oh, okay, well, you know, and then you know, act accordingly, but you're not taking into account that a lot of times people's motivations aren't necessarily the same as yours. I mean, the society's motivations in Texas, I don't believe have anything to do with a desire to prevent crime. Uh, Trying to reduce crime. There's a group, there are a very strong, very, the, the majority in Texas have this mentality that you want to prevent crime. You need to lock people up that show any propensity for crime forever. And that's their way of, you know, and they're completely fine with that. No matter what it costs them, no matter what, uh, uh, how many uh, cities have to be burned to the ground to get this accomplished, that's their, that's their, what they, that's what they want. That satisfies their uh, lust for vengeance and so forth. Their, their uh, sense of of how uh, much better they are than their fellow man. That they should be out there in the free world, and that others should be locked up away from them, type of thing. And that's what I think that that's where I think you're going wrong is you're not addressing the underlying um, thought problems, the underlying uh, issue with the uh, with uh, uh, the secret motivations and so forth that people have. You're not pinpointing that. And you know what? Like listening to to what you're saying right now, honestly, what I'm a lot of what I'm like what I'm hearing. And when I'm, I'm realizing what you're talking about is you're talking about the philosophical aspect of it, like the the aspect of it's not necessarily that it has anything to do, like it's it's not it's not about um, the whether it's not about really even preventing crime at the end of the day, because we do know that if you um, 
you have rehabilitation in prisons, or you stop locking up as many people, or you or you don't have mandatory minimums, or you have better programs, you give them more things. These do prevent recidivism, which ultimately reduce crime. But the thing is, that's not really what they want. The thing that they want is they're like, this is a bad person. They deserve a bad thing to happen to them. They deserve to be, no, they don't deserve anything. They deserve to be put away forever. Right. And this is, and that's the kind of thing. It's like they, it, people are just divided into categories. They're divided into good and evil. And the right. evil, yeah. and the, it's the like evil, what we talked about how we were defining the word criminal and what that means. You know, there's right. a separate category of human being called criminal that's like a different species. It's like, you know, you have Homo sapien and then you have criminal, <laughs> criminal, some kind of right. different uh, category that we belong in. Uh, 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 that that makes it okay for us to be put, you know, to whatever you do to us is okay. Absolutely. And it, it just, that will justify what's going to happen, happen next. And that's, um, it, and it, and the thing is, is like, they don't want a lot of, a lot of those people on that side will be like, they won't necessarily say, oh, they need to be put away for life or they need to be put or, or even like, because ultimately, when you go down that path, you're what you're really saying is, we need to get rid of them. We sh- we should just kill them because they're evil. They're when you when you're saying that it's evil, you need to destroy it and get rid of it from society. And a lot of times, that's what I try and like when I'm talking to people individually, one on one. That's usually what I try and do. I try and get the quiet part and put it out loud because I'm like, what you're saying is if you're saying that they need to go to prison, they need to be punished, they need it, even though you're cutting off your nose despite your face because that's going to result in more crime, that's going to hurt hurt you, then what you're really saying is, why don't you just take it to its logical end and just someone steals a loaf of bread you take them to the gallows. You just kill them right up, right away. Well, what level of crime needs to put you away? What level of of getting you needs to get this put away? Because honestly, if you just say any crime, if you like, if you start at speeding, you, now you've made they'll they'll automatically be like, well, no, that's too big of a net. That's too much stuff. That's too that's like I've sped before. I can't. I'm not one of those people. And then it's like, but you're talking about whenever someone is a criminal or committed a crime. So what are you talking about? And when do you, when do you cross that threshold into becoming a criminal that needs to be destroyed? Well, you know, yeah, you're stepping into you're stepping into the weeds whenever you start talking about that type of stuff because then you know all that parsing out who's who and what's what, all the different opinions. And I mean, some people will say any any. I mean, there was a point in time when there were especially in Texas, I know that, I mean, if you were considered a crackhead, if you were a, someone who was a crack user, there was a, a large part of the population was like, man, lock those people up forever, you know, because they had a, Texas had a, a huge problem with, with crack cocaine, just like everywhere else did. And those people were, were addicted to a substance that was, that required them to you know keep a, a steady supply of it. To feed that feed that addiction, and they ran out of money really quickly. And so, you know, pe- the surrounding areas where a lot of these crackheads were, people were getting, you know, they were stealing everything that wasn't nailed down. And that's one of the hallmarks of that of of, of drug addiction. And so, when drug addiction becomes prevalent in a place in society, they. Uh, you, you start to see that and then the sympathy starts to wear down amongst the general public because all they know is, is that my chainsaw was stolen out of my garage and they don't care, you know? So like in Texas, they decided, I think it was Harris County decided they were going to quit prosecuting or quit pursuing trace cases. What a trace case is, is uh, used to be, uh, they might not find a drug addict with an actual, with any actual drugs on them, but what they would find them with is some paraphernalia like a pipe or something that they would use to smoke their drugs out of. 
So whenever they find those, they look at, they, they, they know what it is, and so they would send it to a laboratory <laughs> to have a lab suss out whether what's, what substance has been in this pipe, and then they prosecute them on, on that alone, which is kind of, you know, there's a, there's, that's really uh, taking it too far. First and foremost, I mean, it costs a lot of money to have those, those to have the, 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 uh, the lab it costs a lot of money to have things tested. And so in those cases, the result in what you, I mean, what are you doing? You can't, can you really even prove that this person smoked? I mean, he might be in possession of a pipe that had something in it at one point, but you don't know where he got it from or who, or, you know, if he was used it or not. Now, more than likely, yeah, if somebody's walking around with a crack pipe, they're probably a crackhead. I mean, that's just like saying having the pipe, though, is something that's illegal. You know, but it's, it's, it starts to get to be where, like, if you were had a hockey team and, Instead of just, um, you know, if, if a hockey player hits someone the wrong way with a hockey stick, well, that's a that's a penalty. Well, it's almost as if you're just penalizing them for having the hockey stick <laughs> because of the potential that they could actually use it for something, <laughs> which, you know, you see how that just doesn't work. The... the cr- uh, crack is a great example for what you're talking about for, like, who who is and isn't a criminal. Um, the, the trace cases, I'm pretty sure they got rid of, but the thing is there's other instances where... They did, but my, the reason why I was pointing that out is because there was an outcry from society whenever they said they were going to stop prosecuting trace cases. People in Texas uh, were pissed off because they were like, oh, no, put these crackheads away. Why you, you know, don't... They, they could not stand the idea that the, here they had a way of getting crack, these people that used... These people that are addicted to a substance off the streets and put them out, putting them in prison, and you'd hear like I'd listen to talk radio and and the people that were calling in were saying things like, "Man, one of those guys stole my chainsaw." You know, the hell I don't have I don't have any sympathy on those people. You know that type of thing. It's not the individual that stole his chainsaw. He's mad at now. He's mad at a category of individual that is the reason why his chainsaw is missing and. And all of them need to be put in prison forever to to satisfy this person's vengeance over his his uh, garden tool. The so um, the the thing is, is that like so crack like you were saying there's crack is in like bad neighborhoods and then they're going in and they're they're cracking down on the neighborhoods. But the the thing is is. Crack is just another form of cocaine, and in, and then in the eighties, uh, or like they made all these laws about crack <laughs> specifically. It became and then and and then uh, George Bush Senior made and then like, they made it where you had to do twenty years at minimum in prison if you were busted with crack cocaine in many, many places. That's a perfect. Right. Example of what I'm talking about, right? But if you're found with the same amount of co- cocaine. powder powder cocaine. That is that you can honestly. I don't even know or if you're a Robert Downey Jr. Then you can get busted with cocaine any number of times and just be sent to a big posh LA uh, rehab over and over again. Well, till you get thing, it out of your, till you get it right, and then you become a multi million you know, Iron Man. The <laughs> the 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 powder cocaine though doesn't come with the stiff penalties that crack does though. Like for you can have way more powder cocaine than you can crack cocaine. And the real difference between powder and crack is that powder is generally used by rich white people, whereas crack was on the streets. So uh, the, uh, so the, that was the big difference. Crack, cocaine, powder cocaine is a party drug. Like, and then whereas that was – crack was a whole different type of party and that the um so so they would you know arrest and throw people lock people up um off the streets for crack M- meanwhile okay you have like their their example about someone steals your chainsaw or whatever steals money from you using crack well someone else using a bunch of cocaine because like you said 
any addiction to any substance is going to lead to you probably doing something to try and get that substance. So you're running out of money and you need to feed your powder cocaine addiction. There was plenty of people who went around and did that, but they could go around and commit white collar crimes. So they go around and embezzle a bunch of money. They might have embezzled from your bank account and you may not have known. And hopefully you were insured and you you didn't even notice. But there was a consequence from it and or they could have they it could have had bigger consequences to the community. They could have been high on on cocaine while they were supposed to be at work violated some safety codes and there could have been serious consequences down the line but the thing the big difference is is the guy who's high on cocaine he can afford his bond he can fight the tri- fight his charges outside with a great lawyer with references and things like that the person who's on the streets with crack they probably can't afford bond to start with. So they've been, they were sitting in jail. They're filling up the jails. So that's why you're going to see a lot more people on crack in jail, other than just the the massive literal crackdown on criminals. Um, But also if someone's caught with cocaine, there's a, it's usually a whole different situation. And that's why you have this different view of who is a criminal. Like when someone's thinking of a criminal, And who the problem is, they're immediately going to crackheads and not someone snorting a line of cocaine, even though we have a great movie, Scarface, like on a giant mountain of it, causing all sorts of havoc. That's that's your reference. (laughs) I mean, that's sorry. I don't watch I don't watch a lot of cocaine movies. I can think of some other movies, but then it's going to go. That the next re- reference I know, like my the next big drug movie, because I really don't like watching drug movies. Those are like, those are crazy. And then like the next one I think of is Requiem for a Dream, and I don't ever want to. That was a that's a heroin movie, and that's a li- that's a lot too much. Um, be prepared, like that. The gonna a lot happens in that movie. A lot happens. It's uh, a gonna, lot happens in that movie. Yeah, it's, plenty it's, of, there's plenty of drug movies with all sorts of sad endings that that come to illustrate the uh, the dangers and evils and pitfalls of drug use. Mm. But what they and, don't never, never usually show is someone going to prison. No, and they don't they don't show they don't show going to prison, and they don't. It's hard. It's not really like movie worthy because there's normally like an arc. Or something that you can follow you can you can kind of root for there if if the, like showing the actual process of someone going to prison is just depressing because all of the like it's dick wolf's um the person who makes law and order the person who makes chicago pd that's dick wolf um that guy's version PD, that's the one where all the cops are like like beating people up and you know forcing them to give confessions and stuff like that yeah they know you know this guy is bad so therefore you know what we do whatever we have to do to get this dude to conv- confess or one always thought one of the- such a load of horse shit here it is this guy's getting beat up or he's getting you know, they're, they're hanging him over the side of a building threatening to end his life and they're like give us the information that's going to put you in prison for the rest of your life or, or, <laughs> <laughs> like okay all right just don't kill me now I'll be like, drop there, me off. There's an episode where a cop gets shot or kidnapped or something like that. And the chief of police goes into a bar to talk to a witness, all right, a potential witness, potential witness, all right, is the bartender. He goes in there and comes in there with a pipe wrench and beats the crap out of the bartender to get him to talk. Just to tell him what he knows, so he could try and find the person who's got got the actually has him. That's not the perpetrator. That is a witness. That's yeah. how we want policing to be done now. Apparently, apparently yeah, that's kind of that's a popular idea. There's, a, I've seen episodes where they walked into businesses and you know, and they, and they tried to get the business the, the owner to a uh, to. Uh, tell them some information about a patron and they're, and they're like, no, they, you know, people that come into my store, they come into my store, you know, the, uh, 
under the idea that I'm not going to, you know, that I'm going to respect their privacy and you know, and then they're like, well, we'll just have, we'll have your license removed and we'll sure. they'll do everything to destroy this person's business because he would, because he, he uh, was invoking his right not to speak on something. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, they're going to destroy your business one way or the other, apparently, because what he was saying is, is that doing this is going to destroy my business. Well, we'll just take your license and you won't have a business. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like you want to talk about destroying your business. You're messing with the police. We can way exactly. we can destroy your your business way better than they can. The thing, and, the thing I've always <laughs> noticed about those shows is there's like there's three categories of people in each one of those shows. There's police, which are the highest level of moral authority and mm -hmm. and, and th that you can possibly attain to in life. I mean, these people are paragons of virtue, and then you have victims, which are also paragons of virtue. But not necessarily, but they're weaker versions of the paragons of virtue. And then you have criminals, which are the rest of the, the overwhelming majority of society aside from that. And those people, doesn't matter what the hell you could do, you do to them, they deserve anything they get and worse. Yeah. And also, victims are not always trustworthy. That's another great aspect of the show. It's like cops can't, are, they're supposed to be trained like they're, the victims are not always telling the truth. They're not always being 100% and the cops need to be on the lookout for, for it. And, um, and then there's the, and then there's the, and then like when you go into like law and order, the DA's job is to make sure that the person, the cop caught goes to jail. Not that they find out who did it or like that they – that through the prosecution, the truth well, comes to light. In those shows, the police have this unparalleled uh, sense of perception. They can, they can suss out exactly what happened in any criminal. I mean they know who's, who's telling the truth and who's lying from the very beginning. They, right. Are, they are on it. They, they, know, they know who's – I don't even know why they have judges and DAs in those TV shows because if, they just need to have a police officer – Point the finger that he'll get it right every time. Absolutely. They just, yeah. Dick Wolf has already made them. Yeah. The paramours of justice. And that is. My uh, name is Dick, Dick Wolf. <laughs> Sounds like he's wolfing down a dick. Wolf, dick Wolf. <laughs> That's. What are you on the hunt for there? Dick Wolf. <laughs> Huh. Well, you heard it here first, folks. That's not and like a big, big superhero name or something. Dick Wolf. Dick. <laughs> hey, we're going to wrap it up right there today. Stay tuned for next week's episode because, or sorry, week after next because we do these every other week. But we do what I started doing like audio first, then video. So there will be something next week. But stay tuned because we're going to, Malone and I will keep on talking and we're going to start talking about why do officers even when they hate each other why do they always have each other's backs and then we also go into everyday life in prisons and eventually we get into some really juicy prison stories you don't want to miss those so thank you um if you are new to the channel welcome come check it out if i hope you're um if you're new to the podcast i hope you're enjoying that please check out the channel check out our patreon check out our store where you can get shirts and things like that and look forward to seeing you next time you can find shakedown merch graphic novels and other projects at waywardpress.com that's w-a-y-w-o-r-d press.com if you would like to support The Shakedown, get exclusive content, and watch episodes live, you can support us at patreon.com slash The Shakedown. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment to give Malone that inner peace he so richly deserves.